Aloha. Welcome to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. The Bear Wozniak Adventure is where all those knuckle-dragging misfits can show up and hear the gospel. Our, our presentation here is uh, very real. It's nitty and gritty, as they say, gritty enough for real men to to just really be drawn to it and for the women that they love to join us, too. So we'll be right back with more of the Bear Wozniak Adventure. And our, our, our guest today is Father Vincent Lampert. He's written a book on exorcism. He's the official exorcist for the Archdiocese of Indianapolis. Welcome to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. Kickstart that engine and roll thunder with the pack. Explore the grittiness of manly spirituality. Gain traction in the virtues. Zoop up your spiritual engine by turning adversity into adventure. Now here's Bear Wozniak. Let's ride. Aloha. Welcome to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. You know, this show is recorded on video, so you can actually uh, go to our website, deepadventure.com, and you can subscribe to our newsletter, and then you get it like the morning before it even airs, and you get the YouTube version. If you become a supporter, like maybe you want to become part of our Bears Mug Club, then you get this uh, the videos released to you like a couple months early before they even air. But I'm saying that for a reason, because we um, today uh, when we're recording this, it's the Feast of the Presentation. And it's an interesting statement that uh, Simeon says, uh, prophesies to Mary, that her heart would be pierced by a sword. Do you know that no one gets to heaven unless their heart is pierced? No one gets by the flaming sword of the Spirit that guards the way to paradise unless their heart is pierced. There's a scripture verse that, that Paul wrote, for the word of God is sharper than any two-edged sword, able to divide between the spirit and soul, the joints and the marrow, and it's with him with whom we have to do. The word of the Lord, of course, the Logos, Jesus, the second person of the Trinity, you have to deal with him. It's almost like it's a knife fight. You know, <laughs> No one gets to the Father but through him. And the, 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 the sword of the spirit is... is is, needs to pierce you if you want to get to heaven. There needs to be the circumcision of the heart, the, the, the work of the Holy Spirit in your life. Mary was pierced by the things that she pondered. Jesus was pierced in the side by the spear. No one gets to heaven without being pierced. And it's that wound of love that purifies our heart. The Bible says that the wound of a friend heals. And Jesus is our friend. The Holy Spirit is our friend. That surgical precision of that sort of knife that cuts and circumscribes and gets rid of our soulish agendas, gets rid of our, 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 our helps us contend with our weaknesses, helps us uh, abandon our will to God's will. That's what that flaming sword is about. That's the flaming sword of the Spirit. No one gets to heaven without being pierced by that sword. And I want to say, when we deal with exorcism, it's the Word of God, the sword of the Spirit, the flaming sword of the Spirit that extinguishes, that, that, that uh, expel, expels the enemy. Um, you know, I also want to say one more thing. I have here with me a ram's horn. Before I speak, uh, we blow... The, I forget the exact well, exact name. I think it's just shofar. This is just a mini one. You can see it on YouTube. Um, we're blowing the ram's horn right now, just like the men of Nehemiah's day blew the ram's horn when they were rebuilding the wall. The men in their domestic church, the men in their families rebuilt the wall in the time of Nehemiah, almost like in a clockwise way. A man and his family, a man and his family, a man in the domestic church. But when they were under attack they would blow the shofar and other men would come running. And in a sense, we're blowing that shofar, we're blowing that, that trumpet of the Lord today to let you know that the church is here and ready to help if you're experiencing oppression. And so we have Father Vincent Lampert with us. Father Lampert, thank you for joining us on the Bears Man Cave. Hey, Bears, good to be with you again today to talk about this very important subject on exorcism. You know, 
if you're an exorcist, you got to be some really bad dude. <laughs> you got to be, you can't, you know, it, but it, you know, you just, oh my gosh, an exorcist, what is he like? But so we actually, we've been, this is our third part talking about exorcism. We've talked about uh, how we discern whether someone is in need of that. And we've actually talked about kind of what happens during an exorcism, but we haven't really got to know Father Vincent Lampert. So we want to know. Uh, talk story with us about how how a vincent lampert how how you become what you how god developed you how your life your stumbles your failures your ups and downs and and uh how you came to be this at this beautiful place with the lord yes so i grew up in the city of indianapolis i have eight brothers and sisters so i have four older brothers two older sisters and two younger brothers Uh, my mother was a convert in fact, she never liked the word convert because she said that means you're becoming something you weren't. When she became Catholic, she said that she discovered she was already Catholic. She just didn't know it. So once she oh. learned about the truth of the church, then she embraced it. So and so uh, our faith was very important to us. We attended uh, Catholic grade school, Catholic high schools, and uh, faith was just a big part of our lives. Parents were both very invested into the life of the local parish. And I had a a nun who taught me in fifth grade, Sister Ramona Lunsford. She's now passed away, but one day she told me that I would make a good priest. And she told me that again when I was a fifth grader, and somehow it stuck with me. And then after high school, after spending two years at a public university, that tugging from God to become a priest that had been planted when I was in the fifth grade came back and... I actually then attended St. Meinrad College Seminary in Southern Indiana and finished my undergrad degree and then went on to graduate studies at the University of St. Mary of the Lake, Mundelein Seminary up in Chicago and was ordained a priest on June the 1st of 1991. So this will be my 30th anniversary this year. Really? You don't look like you could have be having a 30th anniversary yet. Okay, so that was a really nice uh, resume. Now we want to know what really happened during those years. What was the ups and downs of that? That did everything just go smooth? Like everything was just smooth sailing, or what? You know, God usually presents us with a wall or an, a, a you know a challenge uh, on our on our path towards our you know the direction He has for us. Was everything just really oh. smooth? Were you really good at Latin, by the way? <laughs> no. <laughs> how was your? I'm probably, phil- <laughs> I'm probably still not very good at Latin. <laughs> how about how was you? How were you at at philosophy? Uh, I was actually a good student. I was kind of a, I'm a bookworm, you could say. Mm. So even in the seminary, I would spend a lot of free time just going over to the library and reading all kinds of obscure books and manuals. And what's your favorite? Uh, what what book just kind of comes to mind from those days? Uh, philosophy books. There was one I can't even tell you the author anymore, but there was a. Uh, this was in the early 1980s. There was a book I was reading. And the quote always has stuck with me. The quote says, if you try to get rid of qualities about yourself that you don't like, then you declare yourself to be more and more non-existent and your devils grow fatter and fatter. So what's and, the uh, antidote then? What, what's, what did you take from that then? So then what do you do? Well, that, that tells me that when we look in the mirror, we have to, to like who we see and then we commit ourselves totally to Christ who helps us deal with all the imperfections and uh, mm. recognizing that Christ accepts us for who we are and where mm. we are and then calls us to something greater. And that by cooperating with his grace, you know, it's like you mo- your mother said, I was always Catholic, even though you became a convert. You know, the Lord doesn't make us less of who we are. People think when I give my life to the Lord, he's going to make me go to church all the time. He's going to make <laughs> me go to Africa and, and I'm going to, not get to golf with my buddies you know it's actually the lord just makes you he enriches who you are and then you see that transformation of those 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 weaknesses in time become your strengths right because that's when you're weak that's where the holy spirit presents himself to make you stronger yeah and i think god chooses the weak so that the glory always goes to him yes. and not to ourselves yes so you know because i was in the seminary for um three years and then I quit for two years. Well, what brought that about? I was having some uh, second thoughts about whether or not I was truly called to be a priest and 
you know, when you look around you and everyone else is going off and getting married and having a family and going mm -hmm. to the, you know, the work world, yeah, which is a beautiful vocation. And right. you wonder if they're doing that, why am I on this other path? And so I right. stepped out for two years, but I came to discover that if you're going to be true to God, you can run, but you can't run too far. Right. Because God is always on the lookout for you. He's always tracking you down. So I allowed myself to be um, rediscovered, if you will. And then in 1988, returned to the seminary to mm. complete my last three years of studies. And ever since then, I've never looked back. Who is so, it that calls the Holy Spirit the hound of heaven? Who is that that <laughs> said that? I forget. Hey, were you good at, did you, have you read the book, The Mystery of Jesus Christ by Okaras? I, I would say I've skimmed through it, but I've not read it. It's a know, well, for me, uh, I, taking my theology classes at Steubenville, it was like, wow, what an eye-opener. Because so many of the questions that I had about the nature of Jesus, and then so many things that in that process of really the first several hundred years of the church, there was this process of one heresy after another, always about who Jesus is, and it just it just so beautifully through philosophy revelation and revelation of scripture it just settles it and when you really understand who jesus is like the catechism today when i was teaching the quote was jesus was anointed by the father's spirit for the moment of his incarnation okay well that really settles things because i was talking with someone the other day who said oh he didn't re jesus didn't have the holy spirit until he was baptized by john you know there's just all these little nuances that philosophy uh the mixture of philosophy and the revelation of scripture the you know it just you know like the book of wisdom was written about 500 i think bc so did socrates write about that time and there's mm -hmm. that the book of wisdom has some some sort of that uh Platoistic Socrates type elements to it, you know. We're talking with Father Vincent Lambert. I got off on a got off on a tangent. We'll be right back. We're going to talk more with him about um, this beautiful gift of the church called exorcism. This is Daniel the Moon Markham with another episode of Country Up Apart. Two times work took me across the country ahead of my family. Another time was separated from them for better part of a year in order to make ends meet. A part is hard. There is one particular fellow that works serious hard at keeping things apart or causing things to come apart. That would be the devil himself. Oh yes, he's real. The word diablos means the one who separates. He's been in the separating business since ancient time. We have to admit he's been fairly successful at living up to his name. Amazing what destruction he's accomplished with only one primary tool, lying. Confronting some religious liars, Jesus charged, You belong to your father the devil. He was a murderer from the beginning, not holding to the truth, for he is a liar and the father of lies. Could be that's why folks lie so much. Learned it from their daddy, the devil. So question is, how does one stop old slew foot in his tracks? Same way Jesus did. Repeatedly struck him down with the truth. It's why the Bible's called the sword of the spirit. Jesus said Diablos was not holding to the truth. So stands to reason that one who holds to the truth will not be deceived. There's a Bible verse, a counter blow, if you will, for each deception and temptation. Now, holding on to the truth can take a good deal of effort, like resisting the temptation of a beautiful woman, or cheating on your tax return, or resisting a powerful want to pass on a word of gossip. So know how to use your sword, strap it on, and draw it for battle blood without hesitation when called upon. This is Daniel the Boone Markham at countryup.org on a journey a few miles this side of heaven. Hey, man. I don't want you to miss out on your free stuff at deepadventure.com. Go there and subscribe to our weekly email newsletter. You get free video content, including the Bear Wozniak radio show, video version on YouTube before it even airs on EWTN. And you can follow us on all of our social media. Go to deepadventure.com and subscribe. Get your free stuff. And if you're watching on YouTube, don't forget to press the subscribe button and ring that little bell. Don't miss out. Mahalo for your kokua in supporting us. 
Deep Adventure Ministries is grateful to you, our listeners, for supporting the Bear Wozniak Adventure Radio Show at deepadventure.com. We would not be able to bring you our radio show with its uniquely powerful and gritty outreach without your help. You can become part of our pack. You can support our ministry by going to patreon.com forward slash Bear Wozniak or by just going to deepadventure.com and clicking on the Patreon link and become a part of our outreach. That's deepadventure.com. Once again, mahalo for your kokua. This is a warning. The Bear Wozniak Adventure is dangerous. The radical change Bear challenges you to is not for wimps. Change this station now to a soft rock station before it's too late. You've been warned. Now, here is Bear Wozniak. Aloha, welcome back to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. It cracks me up, Father Vincent Lampert, when I said, have you read the book, The Mystery of Jesus Christ? Of course, I've read it twice, and I still don't understand it. Oh, I skimmed through it, you know, like it seemed, <laughs> wasn't deep enough for me. <laughs> but isn't it true that when you're in, in, in your formation, it's like such, the, the teaching of the church is so chewy. It's not pablum, right? It's There's so much to it. And, and that's the way that it should be. There should be a very richness and a deep level to it. But the most beautiful thing about it is that even with the questions that we have, we just live with it. And we realize that, I think of that, the scripture line again, unless you become like these little children, you shall not enter the kingdom of heaven. That, yeah, we mm -hmm. can study and learn, but it's just accepting and taking things at, mm. at face value as a child does mm -hmm. with a loving parent. You know, the parent says something and you just accept it. You don't question it. You don't debate it. You just mm. accept it. You may not fully comprehend or understand it at that moment, but you simply accept it. You take it in and you kind of chew on it you know, throughout your life. And that's why the Catholics, we say that conversion is an ongoing experience. Amen. Not like we're not one and done. So right. just chewing on these things allows us to continue to grow in holiness. I remember the first time I heard the Catholics say that, uh, oh, it was a real conversion experience for me. I thought you had given your life to the Lord five years before that. Oh, yeah, it was another deeper conversion moment for me. <laughs> there's that, there's that, that, that transformation you know, that, that we talk about, you know, that ongoing transformation, the depth of, uh, of uh, you know, but the thing is, is you, you accept it as a child, and you want to, and it feels right to. And then there's that element of faith seeking understanding. And for me, you know, I love my times as a prayer. But to me, when I really see the face of God is when I'm studying. Like right now I'm reading all of the encyclicals of John Paul II. <laughs> you know, you know, you're, plus he's praying for you, but you just know when you, when you hear this truth, something in your soul feels like you're having a personal encounter with Jesus. You know, it's just that the truth of the church is so beautiful. And one of those truths, of course, is um, this whole area of, of, of exorcism. Um, but before we do that, I want to just ask a little bit more. So you, you, uh, what would you say was the, uh, it, you came back from that time of wondering, you took that two-year kind of season of, of stepping out of the formation and then coming back. And then um, there came a point when, 20 years later or so, the archbishop asked you to be the exorcist for the diocese, or, <laughs> yeah. I wouldn't say he asked me. I, th I would say <laughs> that he, t he told me. <laughs> In fact, I still remember I was at, his, at the archbishop's residence, and the exorcist for the archdiocese of Indianapolis had just passed away. And ironically, he was the pastor of the parish where I attended grade school. Mm. And, uh, the archbishop looked at me and, and said, I have a job for you to do. I'm appointing you to be the exorcist for the archdiocese. And he even said, I have no idea what I'm asking you to do, but when you're on sabbatical early next year, I want you to study this as well. And then Beautiful. when I was blessed because I was planning to be in Rome for a three month uh, renewal experience at the North American College and was able then to meet a Franciscan priest who uh, was willing to take me in uh, as his apprentice, if you will, 
and allow me to sit in on exorcisms that he was performing so that I could see firsthand how the church uh, reached out and helped those who uh, were dealing with the demonic. Well, we've been talking over the last couple interviews about this, and we were getting into the point where we were talking about at that moment when people are being delivered, and we had talked about how at first uh, the, the demons, when, the, when once you begin the exorcism and you speak, begin to speak to them in the name of Jesus, they immediately manifest, and that you it, sometimes you you have to kick out. There's, there's usually the weaker ones that are exposed first, but right now the flaming sword of the Spirit comes out, and you get to see Jesus like, you know, as the warrior he is. You know, I love that scripture verse that says, I will dance in the midst of you like a warrior. <laughs> you get to see the Lord, you know. We were watching a Jackie Chan movie last night, like, dude, that is guy, that guy's such a, you know, you think about the Lord like that. He, he, uh, he's undefeated, you know, mm-hmm. even at his, at his death, uh, the 10 count, you know, the, 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 ten, the 10 count of uh, when someone gets knocked out is, one, two, three, four, right, until they count to ten, and then they count it out. Well, when Jesus uh, experienced that blow of, uh, of, um, of death, when he opened his arms and let Satan wail on him, the ten count started ten, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, like they do at Cape Canaveral where we used to live, and then he rose again, you know, like a rocket ship, and he's the champion. He's our champion. Tell us about... Um, what happens as it progresses now you've expulsed several demons and then you get to that one bad guy in that cluster perhaps there's several clusters and you find there what is his right for being there and how do you deal with that last one describe not describe a, a real situation you had to deal with and then we're going to talk about what it's like when someone experiences total freedom yes so this particular person i was working with uh, had a cluster of seven demons Cl- seven clusters or just a cluster of seven demons? A, a cluster of seven demons. Okay. And uh, the weakest ones are the first ones, as you say, to be booted out. You know, I like that image of, you know, the, kind of the uh, the knockout. You know, there at the end, the devil was expecting his arm to be raised as the, as the champion. Right. But then <laughs> it's Christ. Oops. And he's like, what? <laughs> what happened here? And that's the funny thing about the devil is every time he does something that he believes is advancing his kingdom ultimately he's advancing the kingdom of god and of course at the crucifixion the moment that he thought he had won was actually the moment of his defeat yeah and that's in an exorcism that's what all the demons are reminded of including Mm. the more dominant one that remains of that cluster so in this woman that had the cluster of seven demons six of them were now gone and the uh, the main demon because we talked before about there's a hierarchy in the angelic choir there's a hierarchy in the demonic world as well and this particular demon told me its name was leviathan Whoa. and that it, it it did not have to leave because it had been invited in and since it had been invited in it was making a claim on the life of this person mm. and who how did that demon get invited in this particular person believed that a friend of hers was possessed. So out of a misguided uh, act of charity, she went up to her, looked her in the eyes and says, what's ever in you, I freely invite to come into me. And she said no sooner did the words come out of her mouth that she felt something overtake her. Mm. And for 13 years, she dealt with this cluster of demons and only after 13 years, did she uh, finally turn to the church for help? And at that moment when you dealt with that demon, w- how long did it take to, because it can take several sessions. It can take a year even sometimes. I, I've, I, in your book, Exorcism, the Battle Against Satan and His Demons, you describe that. How did that particular de- demon, how, when, what, did, what was the moment when he finally gave up and what, what happened? So we talked before about how exorcisms are always performed in a sacred space. Mm. So we were in a convent chapel at a parish here in the Archdiocese of Indianapolis, and the the demon was manifesting because, again, the very— What do you you mean by manifesting? So manifesting would be where the demon now takes over the person's body, treating that body as if it were its own. So the manifestations included uh, growling, snarling, foaming at the mouth— eyes rolled in the back of the head at times, 
there was uncontrollable laughter and screaming, hissing, the movement of a snake. There were very strong odors in the room. Oh, oh, is that all? <laughs> <laughs> we're talking with Father Vincent Lampert, and we got to take a break. Uh, but we're, when we get back, we're going to talk about um, we're going to f- talk about how that that particular uh, demon was cast out, and then how this person entered into full full freedom uh, of of Jesus Christ. And, and we're talking with Father Vincent Lampert, the exorcist for the Archdiocese of Indianapolis. His book, Exorcism. I think every Catholic should have this book in um, and and read it and understand it, so that they, if, if the occasion it, uh, presents itself they'll understand stand, uh, what they can do to help someone, or even if they're maybe facing some adversity themselves. This is the Bear Wozniak Adventure. We'll be right back with more. Aloha, this is Bear Wozniak coming to you from my home in Waikiki Beach. You know, every day I go out for a surf, and later on at the end of the day, I do a long walk along the sands uh, in Waikiki to the other end, to the place where all the outrigger canoes are, are stored and a lot of people come down and paddle their canoes. The other day I was out there and this guy about my age is paddling in on a super light carbon fiber 22 foot outrigger canoe, comes into the towards the beach, flips the canoe up on his shoulder, walks out of the water, just straight out of the water in an area where I knew there was a lot of sharp coral. And I went, how could he do that? And I gave him the shaka, he walked in and then I looked where he had walked and it was super low tide and I could see that somewhere, probably centuries before, someone had cleared out a path about that wide through that sharp coral. So he knew it, he could get off his canoe and just walk in. This is what lesson I learned from that is that the goddess, that's an ancient path through the coral that very few people know about. Jesus challenges us to follow the ancient path, to take the narrow way. The Didache said there's two ways in life. There's the, wa- the wide way that leads to destruction, and there's that narrow way that, way that leads to life. I want to follow that ancient path, the path that the magisterium of the church teaches us. When we did Long Ride Home, we rode in the Big Bend country of Texas. And the closer we got to the Big Bend, the narrower and narrower the roads got. No one goes to the Big Bend country. No one passes through the Big Bend country of Texas uh, they don't pass through it. you got to intend to go there. There are two paths in life. One that's wide and easy and leads to destruction, and the other one that leads to life. Whether you spend eternity in heaven or eternity in hell is 100% under your control. Choose life. Choose to walk the narrow way. Jesus said, few there be that follow it, but when you follow it, it's its own reward. This is Bear Wozniak from DeepAdventure.com. Deep Adventure Ministries is grateful to Notre Dame Federal Credit Union for underwriting the Bear Wozniak Adventure on EWTN. Notre Dame Federal Credit Union provides car loans, mortgages, SBA loans, and depository accounts nationwide, as well as 24-hour support. Go to deepadventure.com to find their link or go to notredamefcu.com. Mahalo to Notre Dame Federal Credit Union for making the Bear Wozniak adventure possible. Men, yes, we mean you. Go to deepadventure.com and check out Bear's Man Cave, a men's only Facebook group. Join the pack with other men as they challenge and inspire one another to manly virtue. Plus, you can dialogue with us in our regular video chat meetups. Plus, get your exclusive content. Join at deepadventure.com. That's deepadventure.com. Aloha, Mama Bears. Yes, I'm speaking to you. The ones that Cindy and I just love wherever we go, we just love the Mama Bears when they come up and say, we love, we, we love your show. And then they talk about, oh, I, I, I got to reach my husband or my f- son or my brother-in-law or my brother. And you have such a heart to, re- to reach these men who you know some are struggling 
Uh, some are failing in the areas of virtue, but some are really virtuous men that just are too hard as nails to, to give their lives to Jesus Christ. And we see you. Uh, we received a letter from Joan recently and another letter from another uh, mama bear just recently, too, um, just saying, um, we're the ones sitting in the pew when you come into church wearing the wedding ring and sitting by ourselves. And Cindy and I have always noticed you, mama bears. We know it's your prayers that are like the ever ready batteries for our for for ministry. Um, that your prayers for your the men in your lives is part of why the Lord is blessing this ministry. And we love you and we pray pray for you. And don't for a moment in any way think that. Uh, you're anything less than a hero by sitting in that pew at that moment in your life alone and praying the rosary. Don't think, well, all I can do is pray the rosary. Oh, my gosh, it's the most powerful weapon we have. And so continue to pray, and we love you guys. And go to our website, deepadventure.com. You can become one of our mama bears. And we're beginning to spend, uh, uh, we're beginning to address some of our newsletter to our mama bears uh, quite regularly. So please uh feel welcome to be part of the bear the to, to to the deep adventure ministries pack we're talking with father and that's at deepadventure.com we're talking with father vincent lampert so this demon was showing off in essence and and man of trying be by the word of god that he was exposing he was exposed he couldn't hide anymore and so then as as all these things were manifesting then uh what happened next so the demon started to scream and then looked at me and said, if you stop praying, I will stop screaming because people are going to hear the screams and they're going to come in here and see what you're doing. You're going to have to stop anyway. And then I told the demon to obey me in all things, although an unworthy minister of Christ, to say the words of the greeting of the archangel Gabriel to Mary, they're the beginning of Luke's gospel, to say, Hail Mary, full of grace, and to leave immediately. And the demon looked at me and laughed and goes, grace of full, scrambled the words, did not say the name of our blessed mother, and then began to scream and howl. And then I commanded it again to say the words in the order I told it to say it and then to leave immediately. And this demon that had been speaking in his very deep and authoritative voice looked at me and in a child's voice goes, Hail Mary, full of grace. There was a shriek and every manifestation stop before you could even snap your fingers. Beautiful, beautiful. And so that particular deliverance, was that done at one time or was that over several occasions? That was, it. That was over one year. Over I one had year. another occasion where I did an exorcism and it was one and done, as I would say. Mm. This particular demon, when it manifested, even though it didn't tell me its name, when it manifested, the person's eyes turned green and their pupils became slanted like a serpent. Mm. And the voice that came from the mouth said to me, you can't get rid of us. We've been here too long and you're not strong enough. And you're not. And, using, and you're not strong enough. I, I'm not. Absolutely <laughs> not. That's why Jesus you, Christ know, is, you, bring, yeah. you bring in, you bring in Christ, you bring in the, you know, the, the angels you bring in the uh, the saints to bring in the saints. big guns i think one of the biggest guns you bring in though really is the authority of the church the apostolic succession because satan's a rebel and that's why i think yes. sometimes our protestants brothers and sisters know they have to come to the catholic church for some deliverances because one of the biggest things is the teaching the magisterium of the church faithfulness of of uh, the apostolic succession the the that whole authority of the church you bring in the big guns of the saints and the angels and and of jesus christ and uh but so then at this let's let's speak about that this this one we were talking about before um what happened then at the moment when the shriek occurred and the the biggest de all the little demons were gone and then finally the big demon left tell us about what happened with that person then this woman is now looking at me and she's beaming as bright as the sun. <laughs> I mean, you, if you've never witnessed that, it's really so hard to explain. When you see somebody that's been tormented by demons for more than 13 years, and then you just see somebody who's now truly free of all this and recognizes that they are a true child of God, they're loved unconditionally, 
and they're just beaming. They're just beaming. Yeah, it's it's the, there's a liberty, and you know, when you're going through something like that, I think people know it's bad, but they don't know how bad until all of a sudden it's good. <laughs> they go, <laughs> you know, it's like this is everything. Every color must seem brighter. Every moment must seem more precious to that person. And what's interesting, even during an exorcism, is that each person is unique. Their situation is unique. So for this particular person, commanding the demon to say, Hail Mary, full of grace, and then obeying brought deliverance. Wow. The, one, the other one that with the, um, the serpent eyes, as I say, that I had just mentioned briefly a few moments ago, what brought liberation for that person is when I invoked the Holy Spirit and I breathed on the face of the mm. person who was possessed. And when I did that, the person was in the chair. The chair flew back against the wall as if the person was hit by a hurricane force wind. Mm. There was a shriek, and then the person come flying up out of the chair, landed on the floor, and then myself and the other priest with me lifted the person off the floor. And again, there's that beaming that complete brightness mm. where evil is now going and people are radiating the glory of God. The, the infilling of the Holy Spirit at that moment. Um, is it possible to pray for a deliverance for someone that hasn't given their life to Jesus? Absolutely. Mm. We can pray for people. But, you know, we all have free will and exorcism can't be performed on a person against their will mm. but we can certainly pray deliverance prayers for people because deliverance prayers would be prayers directed to god mm. who's asked to bring relief into the life of the person and all of us can say those prayers on behalf of someone else mm. ultimately hoping that the person will come to christ and commit their life to christ and then if there truly is a demonic presence to uh to address that through the ministry of exorcism. There must be so much joy at, at that moment. There must have been so much joy. And then you pray what? Uh, what, what type of prayer then follows that moment when you, um, a special moment of infilling and protection or what, what happens after that, when that relief is felt and the joy, the radiant joy is there? There is a prayer of thanksgiving that's prayed, mm. giving glory to God for uh, the freedom that he has brought to one of his children. The priest had trained me there in Rome. One of the things that he would always do after liberation was to invite the person to go to confession. Oh, beautiful. Just to see if they would like to go to confession. He did make it mandatory. Many people took him up on that opportunity to receive the special grace of the sacrament of reconciliation. And then mm. the person would be uh, entrusted to their uh, pastor or their local priest Again, half the people that come to me are not Catholic, so for ongoing pastoral care, and it would be important for them to have their pastor involved mm -hmm. so that their pastor can give them that ongoing spiritual guidance and direction that they need. And that's so important because it's not so much just about casting the demon out. The presence of God has to be invited in, because ultimately mm -hmm. where the Holy Spirit dwells, an unclean spirit cannot remain. And you think of Luke's gospel that once the house has been swept clean and the demon then goes and wanders through the arid wasteland, but coming back and finding the house swept clean, it goes and finds seven other demons worse than itself, meaning it's not enough for the demon to be cast out. God has to be invited in. The person mm -hmm. has to grow in their relationship with Christ. Otherwise, the demon would say, I've been successful before. Perhaps I can be successful again with this person. And maybe bring some buddies with him. And it's, it's always bringing buddies with him, always. We're talking with Father Vincent Lampert. We're talking about the beautiful gift and grace of the Holy Spirit uh, that the church has, church has been given, the gift of exorcism, the rite of exorcism, uh, and his book, The Battle Against Satan and His Demons. Really encourage every Catholic to have this kind of as a handbook. This is the Bear Wozniak Adventure. We invite you, who maybe you um, have would like to have a deeper walk with the Lord and you know you need good brothers around you, you men go to deepadventure.com and sign up for Bear's Man Cave. It's a secret Facebook group. You can't join it by going to Facebook. You go to our website, become a member of Bear's Man Cave, and then we, uh, we challenge, encourage, and, and inspire each other through the Facebook. But we also have regular Zoom video chats like we had right now with the men. We're going through our annual manly tune-up. We're meeting actually weekly with our notebooks for everyone to 
set new trajectories in every significant area of their lives. We'll be right back with Father Vincent Lampert. This is the Bear Wozniak Adventure. Hey, man, I don't want you to miss out on your free stuff at deepadventure.com. Go there and subscribe to our weekly email newsletter. You get free video content, including the Bear Wozniak radio show, video version on YouTube before it even airs on EWTN. And you can follow us on all of our social media. Go to deepadventure.com and subscribe. Get your free stuff. And if you're watching on YouTube, don't forget to press the subscribe button and ring that little bell. Don't miss out. Deep Adventure Ministries is grateful to Notre Dame Federal Credit Union for underwriting the Bear Wozniak Adventure on EWTN. Notre Dame Federal Credit Union provides car loans, mortgages, SBA loans, and depository accounts nationwide, as well as 24-hour support. Go to deepadventure.com to find their link or go to notredamefcu.com. Mahalo to Notre Dame Federal Credit Union for making the Bear Wozniak adventure possible. Mahalo for your kokua in supporting us. Deep Adventure Ministries is grateful to you, our listeners, for supporting the Bear Wozniak adventure radio show at deepadventure.com. We would not be able to bring you our radio show with its uniquely powerful and gritty outreach without your help. You can become part of our pack. You can support our ministry by going to patreon.com forward slash Bear Wozniak or by just going to deepadventure.com and clicking on the Patreon link and become a part of our outreach. That's deepadventure.com. Once again, mahalo for your kokua. This is a warning. The Bear Wozniak adventure is dangerous. The radical change Bear challenges you to is not for wimps. Change this station now to a soft rock station before it's too late. You've been warned. Now, here is Bear Wozniak. Aloha, welcome back to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. Hey, you guys. Do you know how the children of Israel would enter into a battle? You know how they, the way they would array themselves when God was on the march? The choir would go first. The worshipers would be in front, <laughs> praising the Lord. The Bible says, enter into his gates with thanksgiving, into his courts with praise. That's how you enter in, is thanksgiving. The Mass is called a celebration, right? It's a, it, the Eucharist means thanksgiving. It's a celebration of God. And we're talking with Father Vincent Lampert about about the moment someone is freed from deliverance through a deliverance uh, session and the, the, the gratefulness and the radiance that they show and that, uh, the, 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 that a prayer of thanksgiving then is, is prayed with them. Father, after someone has left now, is there any a time when they need to, you recommend that they receive uh, psychological care also? Because there's, they've been set free, but there's a lot of, the, you know, things in their soul that have been hit or damaged or twisted and just need to kind of make things right. Do you ever do that? Or is it strictly just with pastoral care? That mental health component is so important that the church would initiate that even before doing the exorcism itself. And it isn't that the church doesn't believe the person, but if the person is truly dealing with a demonic episode, then they need to be in a mental strong place in their lives before the prayer is even prayed. Because oftentimes when I encounter people, you know, part of the protocol here in the United States is for a person to have a psychiatric evaluation. Mm -hmm. And again, that's not to discount the person, but it's been my experience, you know, it's not always 100% of one or the other. Mm -hmm. And my experience is that people that are dealing with the demonic, there is some mental health issue that has to be addressed because perhaps the mind fractured as a way to try to, to comprehend it, to understand the presence of the demonic that's now in this person's life. So having experts in the mental health field involved before and after is so important because ultimately, whether it's me as the priest or the psychiatrist or psychologist, our number one goal should be to bring relief into the life of the person who is suffering. And the mental health expert can look at, you know, their area expertise, and then as the exorcist of the church, 
I can look at it from the spiritual angle. There's people listening who are not Catholic, uh, picking this up as they're driving or something. Uh, two questions. First is, I've heard it said uh, among non-Catholic Christians that a Christian cannot be uh, cannot have a demon. That a Christian cannot does not need deliverance. You know what I'm trying to say? A Christian can't be possessed. Uh, what what would our Catholic understanding be about that statement? I would say if one is truly living out their commitment to Christ, that would be the case. But I believe there's a lot of people today that maybe at some point accepted Christ, maybe wear the label of being a Christian, but they really haven't given 100%. You know, uh, there's the old line, you know, God doesn't just want weekend visitation. God wants full custody. And we may say that we're a Christian, but maybe we haven't surrendered 100% to Christ. And that part of ourselves that we try to hold on to could be an avenue whereby the devil is looking for that entry point into our lives. And often you can think of people that maybe became a Christian, and we hear the term maybe being a backslider, where the person then embraced Christ, but then they walked away from that. Or someone may have become a Christian later in life, and uh, and uh, that's great news. But they still need deliverance because they've you know they have the freedom of will always to give their life to the Lord, but they still need that they still need that um, th- to to be made fully free. And so that so that's something that I think um, it stops a lot of Christians, non-Catholic Christians, from receiving help because well, I'm a Christian, I can't have a demon. But uh, yet there may be a stronghold there. You know, the, the thing is, is that we, we um, one of the things I've heard, you know, seen in situations like this, too, is where someone has made a statement like, well, I'm never going to have a child. Or they've made a vow like um, they, they'll make certain vows in their life that are not motivated by the Lord. And they basically carve out a part of their life for themselves alone. And it's that area, that little box there where they said, well, yes, Lord, you can have all of me, but you can't have this part of me, you know, that that's where the enemy can get it, can gain access. Is that true? That's exactly right. Again, we have to give a total surrender of ourselves to Christ. And the part that we try to hold back, the devil could use as an entry point into our lives. So it's like it's not like your heart. But the Bible talks about have not having a divided heart, but having a pure heart, eyes only for the Lord. So you can't say, Lord, you can have all of me, but this, you know. You can't say you're kind of Lord, you know. But the, this area, I kind of want to hold on to because it really is a dangerous statement. I mean, I've I've seen that in in situations like that where people have said you can have all of this, but you can't have that, God, and that's where the enemy has has gained access. What do, um, what do non-Christian pastors ask of you or, or learn from you? Or what, what, are their, what, what would a pastor who's out there right now who knows there's a situation he needs to deal with, but he doesn't feel like he's able to handle it? What questions do they ask you, and what would your response be to those pastors out there that are listening that aren't necessarily Catholic, right? Correct. And again, that goes back to more than half the people that I see are not Catholic. And oftentimes it's their pastors who may be referring them to the Catholic Church. Mm-hmm. The belief that somehow Catholics have a better understanding on how to broach to, uh, to broach the topic of, you know, being possessed or demons. But I think it's so important for, uh, you know, I, I think of the line that if a priest takes his priesthood seriously, so will the devil. Mm-hmm. I think that's true of any minister, you know, any man or woman of God who may be a pastor in, a, in another Christian faith tradition, just to take that calling and vocation seriously. But if we doubt, you know, who we are, then that's where the devil can try to so, you know, that lack of confidence within ourselves, because ultimately, it is Christ who is the one who delivers people. Can we do you know, people that? Always, I was going to say, people will ask me, you know, you know, can exorcisms take place outside of the Catholic Church? And the answer is yes, because we don't have a monopoly on the practice. Mm-hmm. To me, then the, the key ingredient is to be a man or a woman of God. You know, I think of Moses there in the Old Testament when he went before Pharaoh and said, God says, let my people go. 
in an exorcism, that's what we're telling the demon. Mm. God says, let my people go. Mm. And what happened to the staff of Moses' hand? It turned into a serpent. But Pharaoh's magicians were able to do the same thing. But what the magicians were doing was by the work of the evil one. And it wasn't what Moses was doing. It was that he was a man of God, and it was what God was doing through him. So to me, anyone could receive deliverance simply by encountering one who truly is a man or a woman of God. You know, there are great saints of the church who did exorcisms simply by virtue of the holiness of God that they radiated. Mm -hmm. I think of St. Catherine of Siena, mm -hmm. you know, she would simply walk in the presence of one who was possessed and demons would flee just from the that sense of holiness that she was radiating in her life. But and make, to me, that's what all of us need to do. Make sure that that's, you're, that is the case with you, that you're walking close to the Lord. It's like the ones who wanted to cast out uh, demons because they saw Jesus' disciples doing it, and they got torn to bits because they go, well, Paul I know, and uh, Jesus and I know, but you, I don't know who you are, and they tore him to bits. So make sure you're walking with the Lord. And, and Now I want to ask you, we only have a minute can you pray a prayer for us right now for all those that really saying I need some help in this area or we just want to have a prayer of cleansing and can you just pray for a minute and a half here with us for those that are listening a, a, a prayer of I guess deliverance um, a minor deliverance or whatever you whatever you feel to do father all right in the name of the father the son and holy spirit amen loving God in a very special way we ask that you would reach out and touch all those who feel as if they are being afflicted by the evil one at this time. May they come to know of your great love for them, that they truly are your dear child, and that you desire that no one should ever suffer from the forces of evil in their life. We pray that you would set them free, that you would guide them to the right people who would pray with them and for them, to allow them to truly come to know and understand the great love that you have for the human person. Each and every one of us, has been created in your image and likeness, mm -hmm. O God. We reveal your divine image throughout our lives. The evil one tries to obscure that at times, and we pray that you would just simply set all those free who doubt the fact that you're, they are your child and who perhaps the evil one is holding in their grip at this time. Release them, set them free, and let them come to know of the great love that you have for each and every one of us. And we make this prayer in the name of Jesus, who is Lord, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. St. Joseph, terror of demons, pray for us. Pray for us. Michael, Archangel, pray for us. for us. And Mary, thank you for praying for us. Amen. I'm going to miss talking with you, Father. I guess we got to <laughs> say goodbye. This is the Bear Wozniak Adventure. We invite everyone to, uh, to um, go to our website, deepadventure.com, to find out more about our ministry. And Father, if they want to reach you, they would contact the Archdiocese of Indianapolis. They can contact the Archdiocese of Indianapolis, or I actually have an email address, info at exorcismanswers.com. Beautiful. Is answer, exorcismanswers.com a website they can go to as well? It, right now, it's just a, an email just address, email and address. myself and uh, my team will Beautiful. answer those emails. Beautiful. And we either help people or we direct them to the person in their area who can give them the help that they need. Well, Father said that one of the things he does is when he's in an exorcism and it's very powerful is he'll just breathe the ha, the breath of the Holy Spirit. So here in Waikiki, here in Hawaii, we say aloha. It means to give breath. May the breath of the Holy Spirit aloha you. Aloha. aloha. <laughs> Amen. 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 Hey, man. I don't want you to miss out on your free stuff at deepadventure.com. Go there and subscribe to our weekly email newsletter. You get free video content, including the Bear Wozniak radio show, video version on YouTube before it even airs on EWTN, and you can follow us on all of our social media. Go to deepadventure.com and subscribe. Get your free stuff, and if you're watching on YouTube, don't forget to press the subscribe button and ring that little bell. Don't miss out.